Use case scenario extensions are very important. They indicate other scenarios or branches, both success or fail. Observe that in the fully dressed example, that the extension section was considerably longer and more complex than the main success scenario section. This is common and to be expected. Extensions are also known as alternative flows of the use case. Extension scenarios are branches from the main success branch of the use case. An extension has two parts, the condition and the handling. The guideline is to write the condition as something that can be detected by a process or one of the actors in the system. Sometimes, a particular extension can become quite complex. This can serve as motivation to express the extension as a separate use case. Use cases are defined to satisfy user goals of the primary user actors. The basic procedure is to choose the system boundary. Is it just the software application? Is it the hardware and application as a unit? Is it both plus persons using the application? Or, is it an entire organization? Often, to find actors, we need to identify those who have user goals, or those who already fulfilled the goals through using the system services. For each user, identify their goals. Define use cases that satisfy the user goals. Name them according to their goal. Sometimes, goals reveal the actors, or vice versa, the actor reveals the goal. For our case study, the point of sale system itself is the system under design. Everything outside of it is outside of the system boundary, including the cashier, the payment authorization service, and so forth. Again, if not immediately clear, defining the boundary of the system under design can be clarified by defining what falls outside known boundary. The external primary and supporting actors are outside. Once the external actors are identified, the boundary becomes better outlined. To demonstrate, is it true that the complete responsibility for payment authorization falls entirely within the system boundary? No, it isn't, because there is an external payment authorization service actor. In addition to obvious primary service actors and user goals, the following questions help to identify other actors that could have been missed by the initial identification path. Who starts and stops the application? Who manages user and security accounts? Who performs the system administration, and so forth? In addition, we need to know whether it is an actor because the system did something in response to a time event. More similar questionnaire can be exercised by iteration. Once the actors are identified, we can record their goals while being users of our system. Primary actors and their user goals are recorded in an actor goal list. Actor, cashier. Goal, process the sales process rentals and handle returns actor manager goal assign cashier to cash register clear the cashier actor system administrator goal to add users to modify users to delete users Why is the cashier, and not the customer, 
specified as the primary actor of the use case name process sale. Why doesn't a customer appear in the actor and goal list? The answer depends on the definition of the system boundary of the application under design. If presenting the whole enterprise with checkout service organized as one aggregate system, the customer is the primary actor among others. This is because the customer primary goal is purchasing goods or getting services. However, from the viewpoint of just the point of sale system, which is the choice of system boundary for our case study, the application services cashier's goal. The goal is to process the customer's sale by the cashier. In this case, the cashier is the primary application actor of the system under design. It is a common practice to name use cases starting with a verb. For example, create user, update user, and delete user. Sometimes, the details could collapse into a single use case. For the above cases, its name could be to manage users. Defining use cases has several levels of effort ranging from a few minutes to simply record names, up to entire weeks to write fully dressed versions of all possible use cases in question. Later sections of our course will put this to action. In context of iterative development, we will discuss when, and how much time, needs to be dedicated to the use case specification.